Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be checking out this budget $99 GPU to see if it would be worth putting something together with this video card. So what we have here is an Intel Arc A380. This is the ASRock Challenger version and I've been wanting to get my hands on this for a little while. But I couldn't justify the price. I believe this originally launched at $139 or $149. But recently, Newegg actually had this on sale for $99. Plus, it came with two PC games, so I jumped right on it. Now, again, this is the ASRock Challenger version. And originally, I wanted to get my hands on their low-profile version, but I cannot find it anywhere. It's basically the same Intel Arc A380 card, but in a low profile form factor would be really great for uh, super small form factor builds, especially putting something like this in a small form factor Optiplex or HP PC. I thought it would be awesome, but unfortunately I just can't find it. If you have any ideas on where to pick one of these up, or if you run across any listings, let me know in the comments below. But before we go any further with this video, I do want to mention that. This video is brought to you by URCD Keys. Now, I've actually been using this site for a long time now. They do offer PC games from Steam, Uplay, Ubisoft. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use the site is for their Windows 10 Pro OEM keys. These are activation keys that you can pick up really cheap. And right now at checkout, if you use code ETA, you can get 30% off. And this 30% discount will be going on until the end of August. So with this discount, you can pick one of these Windows 10 Pro activation keys up for $15.58. And don't forget, you can use PayPal to check out on their website. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone, and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. At $99 for a brand new card, I do think that this would be a great option for a budget build, but you know, if you don't mind going used, you can always find something for just a little bit more that will outperform it. But with Intel's recent driver updates they've been doing to their Arc series, we do see a nice boost in performance on this 380 from the original launch drivers. Obviously, they wanted to keep this really low cost, so we don't have any kind of RGB. It's not much to look at, but we do get one full-size HDMI port and three full-size display ports. And originally, I was under the impression that this wouldn't need any extra power, but the Mini-ITX version of this ASRock A380 does require one 8-pin power connector. Now, obviously, we can't just test the card like it is, so I need to throw it inside of a PC so we can get everything up and running. But I'm going to go ahead and put this in something that's a little overkill. I don't want any kind of other bottlenecks. I really want to see what this A380 can do. And usually, when I do an Intel art card review, I use an Intel chip, but I wanted to pair this up with Ryzen. This setup here has been sitting dormant for a little while without any GPU. It's actually got a Ryzen 7 7700X. We've got 32 gigabytes of DDR5 at 6400 megahertz, a 2 terabyte NVMe SSD, and a 500 watt power supply inside of this dark flash case. So obviously, we're not going to have to worry about any kind of CPU or memory bottlenecks, but when it comes to the specs of the Intel Arc A380, we've got 6 gigabytes of GDDR6, but it's only running at a 96 bit bus. The GPU clock is up to 2,250 megahertz without any kind of overclocking. It's got 8 XE cores, 128 XMX engines, and it's got a maximum TDP of 75 watts. At least that's what Intel states it being. Alright, so here we go. Like I mentioned, this Ryzen 7 7700X is definitely overkill for the A380, but I didn't want any kind of CPU bottleneck. I was actually really interested in what kind of TDP this actually runs at because, um, they do state up to 75 watts. I've only seen this hit around 65. I know it's a little more that you can go with it. There is a bit of overclocking that can be done, but I really haven't had much luck with overclocking ARC, and it all really comes down to the ARC control center. So we can update our drivers from here. We can add new games, set up different presets if you want to. We've also got the performance section, performance tuning, and from here we've got a GPU performance boost, just 100 megahertz. But every time I've tried to take it up there, even with a little bit of a voltage offset, I always get a freeze up in at least one game. 
But the one thing I usually do here is set this all the way up with any of the art cards, the uh, 380, 750, 770. That way we really don't have to worry about that power limit and we can get to the maximum clocks that we need here. But so far it's been working out pretty decently and the very first thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks that I ran on this. And first up, we've got 3D Mark Night Raid coming in with a 36,810. I was actually expecting a little more given that I've tested this a bit with a couple games before I ran these benchmarks. But the next one we have here is Fire Strike with a 10,557. And finally, Time Spy, not looking phenomenal here, only getting a 4,885. So overall, with these 3D Mark synthetics, I'm not super impressed. I actually thought we'd be scoring a bit higher in each one of these. But these are synthetics, and now it's time to see how this thing can handle real-world gaming. And the first game we have here is Cyberpunk 2077. It did way better than I thought it would. We're at 1080p medium settings, and we are using XE super sampling from the settings in Cyberpunk set to balance. We can get an average of around 67 FPS. So another thing here is FSR. It actually seemed that FSR at balance performed a little better, but I wanted to keep it kind of all intel here just to see what would happen. And their XE super sampling has gotten a lot better over time, but it's not widely adopted yet with a lot of the new games. So with some of the stuff that I needed to scale, I actually used FSR. But the next game we have here didn't need any kind of resolution scaling because it's a very well optimized game. Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, high settings, looking really good. I got an average of 108 FPS, and going into this one, I knew it was going to perform well on this GPU. This even works great on iGPUs, and this card is putting out a lot more performance even over the uh, new RDNA 3 iGPUs, at least at the time of making this video. CSGO was another one I wanted to test because when Intel does their driver updates, they always show this all. And with DX9 performance on these art cards, it's been increased greatly over the original drivers that were released with them. Right now, with this, we can get an average of around 142 FPS, 1080p, very high. Here's the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We're at 1080p medium settings, and I did use some resolution scale here to kind of get over that 60 hump. Now, uh, with this, we got an average of 63 FPS, so maybe scaling it down a bit more or going to low settings is the way to go with this one. Horizon Zero Dawn, 1080p, FSR set to balanced, we got an average of 77 FPS. It's playable like this, and since we're over that 720p hump, taking that to balanced actually still looks really good. Another one I was interested in testing out was Elden Ring. So I've seen some gameplay with this on the A380 in the past with older drivers, and it was really hard pressed to run this over 50 FPS. But now we're actually at 1080p medium settings and we can get a pretty constant 60. Now obviously we will get a few dips here and there, but performance is actually way better on Elden Ring with these new driver updates on the ARC A38. And finally, we've got Spider-Man Miles Morales, 1080p medium settings, FSR set to balance, we can average 73 FPS. Overall, with some resolution scale, whether you use XESS, FSR, or just regular resolution scale, this does perform really great. I mean, I wouldn't mind playing these games on this card here at 1080p with a little bit of scale in the underground and rocks on in a shootout nearby. Okay, so first impressions here with the A380 and those newer ARC drivers. I actually really do like this card. It's not bad for 1080p, and of course, with some of this stuff, we did have to turn on FSR, but we're working with a $99 GPU, and it's a brand new $99 GPU. One thing that I've been searching for is a low-profile version of the A380, and ASRock does have one listed on their site. I believe there were a couple other companies that initially announced a low-profile version of this, but I think with the bad driver optimizations that Intel released with this card, it got a bad rep, and some of the companies just backed out of doing the low-profile versions, given the performance you were going to get out of it. But since Intel has been really hard at work with these driver optimizations for ARC, I think at a $99 price tag, if you're looking for a new card, this would be a pretty decent option to pick up. And of course, what we tested this in was way overkill, so I'd like to know from you, would you like to see a budget build using the A380 on the channel? We could go with an older Opiplex, that's going to be one of the cheapest options, or we could go with new budget parts or even used parts from eBay. 
If you've got any suggestions on a CPU combo for this thing, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in learning a little more about the A380, I will leave a few links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.